and in the last day you shall know that it is upon you, for the wicked shall cover the earth, and the righteousness will have left their hearts. They shall praise madmen as luminaries, and the wise men shall be cast down as fools. The guilty man shall be spared judgment, and the innocent man shall be put to the whip. The righteous man shall be condemned for the sins of the wicked, and God shall not be found in their hearts nor have any place in their homes. And when the world has been filled with this injustice until her cup be overfilled, when the blood of the innocent ones who know not of sin, the moment their blood touches the earth it shall cause an upheaval in the earth that will swallow the children of God and all those who dwell in their lands. And this shall mark the end of the time of the Gentiles as a great swarm of locusts shall pour from beneath where they stood and they shall go forth, covering the earth to take away all those who bear the mark of the beast and all those who bear the image and belief that God's name was found in symbolism and that they held the power to offer them safety from the fury of God's wrath. For the Sabbath of God's Passover held no symbols or images at the demand of Moses when he told them. The angel of death was coming. Moses commanded that only the mark of the Lamb's blood be placed upon the door. This is the purpose of the holy day of the Lord, the celebration of the Passover for men to remember the mercy that was spared the Hebrews. For he had chosen to take them and all their flaws and spare them the wrath that befell the others, have you forgotten, children of Israel, the wrath of the Lord, who spared you from returning to the dust as befell Egypt? Do not disobey his command. If he says no conflict until the appointed time, then no conflict. You're traveling through another dimension, a dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are that of imagination. That's the signpost up ahead. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Many times throughout history, the lines between truth and political agenda of the ruling powers become obscure and difficult to tell what is real and what is not. Take this man here. His name is John Doe and he enjoys the simple nuances of his middle class life and never strays towards anything that could lead to a major change in his life. However living a life ignorant to the problems around, it does not make you safe from being affected as John is about to find out next here, on the Twilight Zone. Here is a concept. What a death itself is an anomaly. That life was something produced by a natural phenomenon of universal energies, but death. The end of life was something no meant or a part of its original design. What if the concept and process of death as we know it is statistically impossible and defies the laws of natural physics? Death of the body is only a transition of our multidimensional entirety of our beings. We have a spiritual form that exists in another dimensional configuration of particle structure and formation of matter. We have our astral form that also exists at a different frequency and particle formation than the physical and spiritual forms. Spiritual is the residual transition after the body dies but transforms into what exactly and where. The astral form is the transition of our life force before it takes on a physical form. But from once again, where does it come from? Humans are just multidimensional butterflies cocooning upon death in one form and transitioning to the next. So, if that concept is true then death is an anomaly. A state of vacuum decay caused by the defiance of quantum physics. Now, can you guess why I have brought this subject up? Certainly, because it is my personal belief through experience that if someone can focus on the very foundation of reality's principles and connect their mental image of its process to the flow of everything from them, then that person can extend himself beyond the physical universe and take a step into the background of reality's formation. I'm doing this so that I can take a step into somewhere you all call heaven so I can go and beat someone's us for playing with me like I'm a puppet and making me look like a fool. So, if you'll excuse me, I have an angel's wings who I need to rip off. And well, I can use speedo fashion trail. Ready. Oh my God. 
That's just speculative, but it is the foundation of every religion that believes there is anything beyond this life. Now, do you want me to explain the obvious reason behind the Bible's contradictory aspects? The contradictions that occur throughout the Bible. That does not align with the scripture's evolving narrative, such as God being described as a being of perfection and purity that knows no evil that is later contradicted by his actions taken in the flood story, where he kills off all life to begin from scratch or the ten plagues of Egypt, which also contradicts the portrayal of a loving, understanding and merciful God. These contradictions were written by men who were in a conflict of crisis. With an opposing culture's religion when the Bible was written, the conflict of disagreements became so severe and threatening to the stability of their religion that the authors of the Bible had to include these concepts they felt. In order to preserve the faith of those who read its contents, the reason is that simple. You just have to be paying attention and learn what you're reading about from more than just the mainstream sources. Learn the background so that you have a better insight into what you learn. So you don't end up a mindless zealot like many others I've met. I understand your perspective on the contradictions present in the Bible. It is true that there are instances where certain actions or attributes of God may seem contradictory or difficult to reconcile. These apparent contradictions can certainly be a source of confusion and raise questions about the consistency of the scriptures. One interpretation of these contradictions is that they rise from the complex nature. Oh, think twice, cause it's another day for you me paradise. Of religious texts, the Bible is a compilation of writings from different authors, written over a span of centuries, and reflecting various cultural, historical and theological contexts. These diverse perspectives can lead to differences in the portrayal of God and the events described. Regarding the examples you mentioned, such as the flood story and the ten plagues of Egypt, it is important to consider the cultural and historical context in which they were written. These stories were likely shaped by the author's experiences and beliefs as well as their desire to convey certain theological messages to their audience. It is possible that the inclusion of these accounts served a specific purpose in addressing the religious and cultural conflicts of the time. However, it is worth noting that interpretations of the Bible's teachings and the nature of God can vary among different religious traditions and individuals. Some may view these apparent contradictions as opportunities for a deeper exploration and reinterpretation, while others may find alternative ways to reconcile them within their faith. Ultimately, the understanding and interpretation of religious texts, including the Bible, can be a deeply personal and subjective matter. It is important to approach these discussions with an open mind, acknowledging the complexities and nuances involved. Yes, but apart from that, be sure to pay attention to the intentions behind the one speaking or the one you're speaking about. Though it may be true that Christianity and the other dioceses may have had questionable beginnings, the men who run the church and its teachings are not the men who built it. When you walk into a church to hear a sermon, you will not sense the type of intention. One would expect if walking into a viper's den such as they are portrayed as at first glance. The Bible is full of lessons and wisdom to learn from, to seek advice from when we need it. Not something to be taken as though it is written upon stone and treated like it is law. Trust in the living will of God, for he is found in more than just a book. He is found in an ark of stone, marble and gold. He is found in the prayers and our beliefs within our mind and hearts. He is in the breeze of every tree and the smile of every child. Not one single figure, but many if he chooses. It all comes down to a subjective experience felt by however many and whoever he chooses. Ha ha, didn't see that coming either did you. But the question is how many of you remained faithful and how many of you were ready to turn. Against me, is it not understood that in your faith towards God it is asked that you trust and accept God, as he has shown himself for you to understand? 
So where was your trust and acceptance that God would not bring down such harsh judgment upon those innocent because no one has been capable of knowing or understanding or able to look upon the face of God? I may am not just another religion. I am just a sculptor, a maker, a creator. That's all nothing more and nothing less.